Hey everybody, how's it going? Thought I'd bring you guys uh, some instant reaction from my position here at the Etihad Stadium. Really, really disappointing night. Um, looking at the way we've defended in recent weeks, I can't say I'm surprised by what I saw tonight. Um, I saw a really, really good, strong Manchester City side uh, that were really, really dangerous whenever they won the ball back high up the pitch. That were really, really dangerous whenever they won the ball anywhere on the pitch. But if I said I wasn't disappointed with Arsenal and if I tried to make excuses for the performance uh, that I saw tonight from our team, uh, I wouldn't be being honest with you guys. And I don't think that that's a, a position that people should be taking. You can say that Manchester City are a great side. You can say that they were much better than us. You can say that, you know, people have probably suspected for a long time that when Manchester City came good, they'd have too much for us. But you can't pretend that what Arsenal did tonight and the performance that Arsenal put out uh, was one that we can really accept. You know, I know that, you know, we weren't expected to challenge this season. I've said that countless times. I know that if Arsenal were to miss out on the Premier League title, it's not something to go overboard about. I've said that over and over again after the last few weeks. But today I wanted to see more. I wanted to see some maturity. I wanted to show, uh, or I wanted us to show tactical discipline. I wanted us to understand where we were and the opposition that we were playing. And I'm not saying you go there and you hide in the shadows and you don't play your game, but you have to adapt your game slightly against a side that are superior to you. You have to change it up a little bit. You have to be risk averse in certain situations you have to understand the weaknesses that you have Mikel Arteta spoke in the build up about Man City's weaknesses of course they have weaknesses defensively they have weaknesses but we never laid a glove on them and that's the really really frustrating thing about it um, we talked a lot in the build up to the game about Rob Holding I know he scored a goal and he actually took it quite well but I thought his, his performance was one that just kind of summed up all the issues that we have when he is in the team and it's not to pick on him as an individual because I've said this time and time again I think in a different team in a different system where you're not looking to play with such a high line and you're not trying to play on the front foot as much he probably fits in quite well but he just does not fit in with what we're doing today and I thought in the first half he was really poor he was all over the place he was getting sucked into situations that he should never have got sucked into uh, there was that one incident where Fortunately for us, Manchester City didn't score in the end, but he sort of stepped into the centre circle to try and get to a ball ahead of Erling Haaland that he was just never going to get to. And those kind of moments just happen way too frequently, particularly in the first half. And I said at the break, you know, I know we conceded the goal right on the stroke of half-time, the VAR controversy, all of that. But I thought we were lucky to go in at the break, not four or five down. That's how bad our first half performance was. We offered nothing as an attacking outfit. We didn't cause City any problems whatsoever, which is obviously disappointing when you look at the firepower that we have, when you look at the fact that despite this you know, disappointing run that we've been on, we've still managed to score goals, two at Anfield, two at West Ham, three against Southampton on Friday. You expected Arsenal to at least cause Manchester City some problems, but we just never got a hold of the game. And, you know, in the past, this Manchester City team will, will kill you with a thousand passes, you know, they'll they'll pass you to death they'll move the ball from left and right and you know they'll sort of wear you down slowly slowly but what they did today I thought at times was show incredible control without even having the ball you know they had some really physical powerful defenders in obviously Akanji, Ruben Diaz and Stones Carl Walker was in the team at uh, this time probably because of his pace and probably to kind of try and look after Gabriel Martinelli I didn't think Stones was in the midfield today as much as he has been for Manchester City in recent weeks so there was obviously an element of Pep Guardiola just tweaking it and changing it up a little bit to deal with the threat that he expected Arsenal to pose and it worked really well and what you saw today was master versus apprentice tactically um, you know I I've said for a while that whatever happens in the Premier League Arsenal have had a cracking season and I think if I'm not mistaken because of Brighton's result tonight where they were beaten at Nottingham Forest we're guaranteed Champions League qualification now I said earlier in the week that it pretty much was guaranteed we just needed uh, another point I think it was and um, and obviously Brighton losing we lost but obviously Brighton losing uh, was uh, was what makes the difference and what makes that official for us but yeah um, yeah it, it is what it is it's a it's a really disappointing night it's a bitterly disappointing night in fact 
Um, I'd be lying if I tried to package it up in any other way. And I just wanted to see more fight. I just wanted to see more know-how. I, I, I felt like we got sucked into the, the sort of dark side of the game. And that was probably out of frustration. You know, we got involved in way too many of those silly altercations, which just play into Manchester City's hands, particularly when they're leading a game. You know, people talk about the pretty football they play and they do that in an abundance and they do that extremely well. But they also have a nasty side to them. They also have a competitive side to them. And um, and we just weren't able to live with all of those things tonight. The atmosphere in the Etihad was, was really good tonight from a City point of view, obviously. Uh, I've been here on a few occasions and it's never been like this. It's never been as raucous as this. So the fans played their part as well. But the performance from a number of players was just so, so disappointing. We're going to do the player ratings um, on the Another Slice platform for our premium members. But... In terms of some performances, I just wanted to talk about Rob Holdings, I thought was was poor. Um, but again, nothing surprising there. Nothing shocked me. I didn't see anything from Rob Holding that I didn't expect coming into the game. He just doesn't fit. I keep saying it. I thought Zinchenko was a letdown tonight. I really, really did. I didn't think he got on the ball enough. And when he did, he didn't use it very well. He was loose in his passing. Uh, defensively, doesn't give you very much. We've said that all season. Didn't give us much of that encouragement or or sort of leadership either. He was booed, actually, by the Manchester City fans. Um, maybe that got to him. I don't know. But he just wasn't himself. I didn't think Granit Xhaka was himself tonight. I understand why Mikel took him off when he did. We know that he was a doubt for the game. He only had one training session in the lead-up to it, so that makes sense. Uh, but he didn't look the same in midfield. Martin Odegaard off it. Saka off it. Martinelli hardly involved. Jesus very, very isolated. What I saw tonight was two managers go head to head with very similar philosophies one with better players than the other and Pep Guardiola was able to was able to sort of read what Mikel was probably going to do understand what Mikel was hoping to do and um, you know and he found a way of nullifying that by making a slight tweak himself our manager didn't do that our manager wanted us to go out and play our game he talked about City's weaknesses in the build-up I didn't see anything specific tactically from Arsenal that suggested they were trying uh, to to cause uh, City problems based on something that they'd spotted in the build-up necessarily um, so yeah I just think we were we were beaten by a much better side but when you lose in that way it's it's really disappointing isn't it I mean I, I talked in the lead-up about the importance of staying in the game and hanging in the game and you know making sure that you're in with a shout even if you're not playing at your brilliant best which is very hard to do here I accept that but to concede a goal the way we did after what seven minutes was really really disappointing and that just put us on the back foot from the off and you know at West Ham we started really well we started really well at Anfield the week before that certainly didn't start well at Southampton but you know we had enough in the tank to be able to get the point that we I'm not going to say that we needed or hoped for because that certainly wasn't the case but we had enough to get a point <laughs> tonight though um, you know you, you put yourself on the back foot against a team of this quality you invariably lose and um, as I say after that Kevin De Bruyne go after seven minutes which you know I haven't seen many replays I saw a couple inside the stadium I just wonder if Aaron Ramsdale could have done a little bit better there let me know in the comments if you think I'm being harsh but you know, to be beaten at your near post like that, I thought that the danger had kind of been averted. I thought we'd done a good job of steering uh, De Bruyne into that right channel when he manages to find the finish. Top quality player, obviously. But was there more that the Arsenal goalkeeper could have done? You know, it was a really good effort. It curled from outside the post to inside the post. When you see the, the angle from behind the shot, but at the same time, whenever I see a goalkeeper get beaten at his near post like that, I feel uneasy about it and uncomfortable about it. Um... Then, of course, uh, we conceded the second goal right on the stroke of half-time. I must admit, I saw a couple of replays uh, on the monitor here in the press box in front of me, and I thought that John Stones was offside. Um, obviously, I didn't get the angles that they have at Stockley Park, and I didn't really sort of um, have any complaints when that decision was eventually made because, you know, they've got the technology. I trust the technology, you know, as much as you can. That's, that's kind of what we have to live with now, isn't it? Uh, but that goal was a big sucker punch because I remember sort of going into the half-time break thinking we've been really, really lucky here that it's not 3-4. And, you know, let's try and take the positives for that from that first half, which would have been at that point not playing very well, but still very much in the game. 
But then once that goal got given, I just felt deflated. And I think the Arsenal fans away to my right felt deflated. And I think everybody felt uh, that this was only heading one way. Obviously, you come out in the second half with a little bit of hope, a little bit of enthusiasm around uh, what your team might be able to do and produce. But, you know, then you can see the goal <laughs> um, sort of, what, nine minutes, ten minutes into the second half. Again, a really, really cheap goal. A lot of people will, will pin that loss of possession on Martin Odegaard, and I will too, because that's ultimately the player that lost the ball but I think at the same time I, I don't know that like Xhaka puts his foot on the ball when he sort of hesitates doesn't play the pass initially waits holds on and then when he does play it Odegaard's not balanced to receive it and then he plays a loose pass a silly pass but even after that you've got to do more um, to, to stop that goal going in I don't think Thomas Partey gave enough in terms of trying to get back uh, to cover De Bruyne's run on the left. And once you give the ball to De Bruyne in those types of areas, you can't complain when you're punished. You know, he, he had a chance in the he had another chance in the first half. Harlem put one wide in the first half. A couple of really good stops from Ramsdale as well. It could have been five or six tonight. And if it was, nobody could have complained on the balance of play. City dangerous every time they went forward. Arsenal toothless every time they went forward. And they never looked like laying a glove on this Manchester City side. So can't complain about the outcome you can't complain about the result it's not a game that you can look at and say okay we lost but you know I'm proud of the team I'm proud of what they gave I'm proud of what they did it's none of those things for me this was a really really disappointing performance from a group of players that have lost their way in the last few weeks um, you know perhaps we're leveling out a little bit people will try and dress it up positively by talking about the wider context of this season and whilst I agree that in the wider context of this season we've done really, really well, it doesn't feel like any type of consolation at this point because to me it feels like the Premier League title slipped away from us. It feels like Manchester City are going to cruise to win it now. But it's very, very important that Arsenal refocus, get back on track, do that very, very quickly, starting with Chelsea who were beaten at home by Brentford uh, tonight and make sure that in the event, in the unlikely event that Manchester City do slip up, Arsenal were there um, to, uh, to to take advantage of that. That's all you can kind of hope for now. Um, Arsenal pulled the goal back on 86 through holding and I think there would have been some people out there that would have started to believe given some of the comebacks this team have produced this season, maybe. Uh, but this is a different kettle of fish. This is the Etihad. This is the home of the Premier League champions. And then we go and concede a fourth to make matters worse. I mean, the scoreline was somewhat respectable at 3-1 at 4-1. It looks like the absolute trouncing that the balance of play suggested it was. But as I say, really disappointed, bitterly disappointed. Got a four-hour drive home now um, from the Etihad, which I'm not looking forward to. Going to set off at probably about 11 o'clock by the time I get all my stuff done. Um, thanks for tuning in. Leave a like on the video, not for the result, but uh, for, for me for having to drive back four hours. Um, <laughs> spare a thought by leaving a like you know the drill subscribe to the channel if you're new and we'll break it down in a lot more detail and we'll analyze it in a lot more detail tomorrow uh, on uh, Monday uh, th Monday Thursday's edition of the Chronicles of Aguna podcast cheers guys